Welcome everyone, in this video we will solve a physics olympiad question. Let me draw the question first and then go over it. So, we will have a spring mass system on a horizontal surface with friction. Friction makes this question interesting. So, here is the spring and spring is massless. So, it is something that makes the question a little bit easier. And we have an object with mass m. Let's say that the spring constant is k. And we are told that there is friction uh, in this surface. All right. Now, the uh, when the spring is at its natural length, that is, it isn't stretched nor compressed, we give this mass a velocity of v to the right. Now, it is going to travel through a distance of 2L from its initial position. And when it does that, it will be at a speed of 2 over 3V, as we could expect the speed decreased. And when the, uh, when the mass travels a distance L further, so when it is at a distance 3L from the initial position, it will come to a rest. V will be zero. The question is, when uh, during the uh, during the returning motion, so when the block comes to a rest, it will accelerate to the left because the spring will be pulling it towards the initial position. So during the motion to the left, what will the maximum velocity be? So what is V max during the return? And we want V max in terms of V. All right. So perhaps you will say it will be 2 over 3 V. It won't be 2 over 3 V. But that's the kind of answer that we are looking for. So why don't you pause the video? Try to do this problem on your own. And when you're ready, continue the video. Cool. Now we're ready to solve this problem. And by the way, I will attach the original paper to the descriptions part so that you can also have a look at the problem there. Well, how do we start? The best way I think is to first consider the two cases and then try to figure out how we can relate those two cases to the returning motion. So we initially have a velocity of uh, V. So we have a kinetic energy of 1 over 2 mv squared. And there is no other energy at the initial position. This energy should equal. Now, I know that there is friction. So, let me call that friction uh, capital F. Alright, the friction is capital F. I know that uh, the frictional force will do a work of F times 2L during the first part. Because work is force times distance, displacement, distance actually, uh, for friction. And it is negative of course, but notice that I put it on this side so that it is a positive. If you put it here, it will be a negative. And what are the other energies? There will be spring potential energy. It is in the form 1 over 2 K, the displacement from the origin squared. What is the displacement? 2L squared that 4L squared. Plus, we still have a kinetic energy that is 1 over 2 M, the velocity squared, so 4 over 9 V squared. Cool? This comes from the first case. Now the second case. Uh, now the second case. We have 1 over 2 M V squared. I'm still using the initial energy. This should equal, now the frictional force ha, ha, has done F times 3L amount of work because the distance that we traveled through is 3L and the force of friction did not change. Plus, there is no kinetic energy. The mass comes to a stop, but there is spring potential energy which equals 1 over 2K 9L squared. Because I squared 3L. So we have these two. And this is the 
information that we're already given from the question. We weren't given these formulas, but with the givens, with the knowns, we were able to figure these out using energy conservation. Now, how does this help us? There is an important decision here to make. We want to express all quantities in terms of one quantity. And that quantity, I argue, should be related with V. Because at the end, we want to convert V max. We want V max to be in terms of V. It makes sense, right? We're looking for a velocity. So let's just write it in terms of the initial velocity. However, it might be hard to isolate V by itself because we have V squared. And whenever we have V squared, look at the equations. We also have M. So I propose let's write all the terms in terms of mv squared. All right. And I know it might be hard to understand what I'm trying to tell. So let's just do it. And then it will be much, much more clear. So for that purpose, I will multiply the first equation by 3. By 3. So when I do that, and also, well, uh, let's combine these two terms. They are like terms. So we can combine them, which means, let's see. I'm going to write that equation below. So actually, you know what? I'm not going to do that. Let's do it here. So this is going to be 2. And then if we equate the denominators, this is going to be 18. This is 9. Then we have 18. This is 4. So we have 9 minus 4 over 18. So 5 over 18. Let me erase it and write it. We have... 5 over 18 as the coefficient of mv squared. If that step was uh, that step was fast for you, pause the video, please. Try it on your try it on your own, and then continue it. You will see that this is the result that you get. But it is super important that you are able to follow. As I said, if you can't follow along, it might be fast for you. Please pause and try it on your own. Cool. So now I will multiply this one by 3 and this one by 2. My aim is to have these two terms to be the same so that when I subtract these equations, I will elim eliminate them and be able to express KL squared in terms of MV squared. So we have, I am multiplying the first equation by 3. We have 5 over 6 MV squared equaling 6FL plus plus 6KL squared. All right, and the second one will give us MV squared equaling 6FL plus 9KL squared. I will subtract these two guys. These cancel. That was our goal, so that's nice. We have negative 1 over 6 MV squared equaling negative k, uh, 3kl squared. These become positives. So we see that kl squared equals 1 over 18mv squared. Cool. Now, I also want to express fl in terms of mv squared. So let's just substitute this result to, well, to this equation. So that we have mv squared equaling 6fl plus. We have 9kl squared. So if we multiply by 9 here, 9 and 9, we see that 9kl squared equals 1 over 2mv squared. So 6fl equals 1 over 2mv squared, which means that fl equals 1 over 12 m v squared cool now this won't be enough though because we still need need to consider the returning motion and here comes the part that we need to think a little bit we are asked to find the maximum velocity during the return when does the maximum velocity occur notice that acceleration is the time derivative of velocity so, if we have t 
and v graphs, velocity versus time graphs. And what I'm about to say is not for this question, not particularly for this one. It is a much general case. If we have a function like this, perhaps, notice that the local maximum or the local minimum, so the extrema points, always occur when the derivative is zero for this continuous velocity functions. All right, so perhaps at this point. What I am trying to say is, when we are asked to find Vmax, we are indeed interested in the point that the acceleration is equal to zero. And when does that happen? That happens when the net force is equal to zero. Right? F net equals ma, mass is not zero. If acceleration is zero, the F net gotta be zero. Cool? We now can use this idea. We are only interested in the horizontal direction. The vertical is always the same. It is always uh, in that direction. There's always a net force of zero. Normal force always balances the weight for this problem. So now if we say that the net force is zero for the horizontal as well, this means the force of friction F should equal, should equal the spring force what is the spring force it is given by hook's law it is k spring constant times x the displacement from the natural length of the spring all right so we have this now comes a new need we want to express f in terms of uh, in terms of given quantities let's say okay and notice here, uh, this is the spring force, this is Fs, and this is the frictional force, Ff, okay? Keep that in mind. Let me erase this. Cool. So what will the F be? What will the force uh, of friction be? Well, we can figure it out like this. We will have... Uh, if we take the ratio of this and this, and that might, what I'm saying might not be clear, but let me write it here. We have FL equaling 1 over 2 mv squared, and we have KL squared equaling 1 over 18 mv squared. If we take the ratio on both sides, on the left we have F divided by KL equaling, on the right mv squares cancel, this is supposed to be a 1, sorry, there is a 1. It is 1 over 12, not 1 over 2. So, and we squares cancel, we have 18 over 12. That is, let's see, that is 3 over 2. So, F, the force of friction, equals 3 over 2 KL. All right? Which means, if I, if I substitute this to right here, I see that the force of friction is 3 over 2 KL and the spring force is KX. K is drop. So Vmax occurs when X is equal to two, uh, 3 over 2 L. So when the spring is uh, stretched a distance of 3 over 2 L from, it, from its natural length. When that happens, the velocity is at a maximum. So let's just consider that case. Let's write the energy formulas for that case. Now, for the energy formulas, we will, of course, have a... Well, we will have a... Hold on a second. Now, let's think about it. Which, from which point should we start? I personally recommend to start from this position. Let's say that at that point, we take it to be the initial position for the returning motion, which it is. So at that point we have a, we have an initial initial energy excuse me we have an initial energy of one over two k the displacement was three l don't forget so it is nine l squared we square three l this initial energy should equal the energy that we have the energy that we have at the uh, at the three over two l mark plus the work done by friction. What is the work done by friction? It is 3 over 2 L times the force of friction, plus we will have a kinetic energy of 1 over 2 M V max 
squared. This is what we are looking for. Great, we are getting there. Plus the spring energy, which is 1 over 2k. What is the displacement? It is 3 over 2 squared. 9 over 4, we also have L squared. Cool. And let me make this 9 pretty. Yay. So we will... Well, let's just first... Uh, let's just first get rid of 1 over 2s. Boom, 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 boom. Cool. And also, we can combine this and this term. Uh, oops. So, when I do that, we will have multiply by 4. So, 36 minus 9, 27 over 4. KL squared equals 3LF plus M V max squared. All right. Here we can now substitute for KL squared and FL or LF. That's the same thing. What was KL squared? Right here. 1 over 18 MV squared. Let me write it. We have the coefficient and then 1 over 18 MV squared. Equaling what is LF? It is right here. 1 over 12 m v squared. This is also added with m v max squared. The masses drop. That's always nice. And now we're about to find the maximum velocity in terms of the initial velocity. Let's just make some simpl simplifications. So on the so this part this becomes a four. Um, let's see. Divide this by 3. That's a 9. Let's even divide by 9. So divide by 9. That is 3. Divide by 9. That is 2. 3 over 8. V squared minus. This is 1 over 4. So it is going to be 2 over 8. On the other side. V squared. Equaling V max squared. This part. That part is equal to 1 over 8. V squared. So, when you take the square root on both sides, you get that V max equals V times 1 over the square root of 8. So, it is going to be equal to V divided by 2 square root of 2. And this is the final answer. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, please write them in the comment section. I hope to see you in another video. Until then, take care.